Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be starting an impromptu horror vlog. I was wanting to read a ton of horror on my TBR. I know I talked about in my TBR video for August reading a bunch of thrillers, but I've just been in a horror mood and I'm going to let myself do my little mood reading thing. So I'm going to be just mood reading horror in this video. There are a ton of things I'm wanting to get to, like Along the River of Flesh, which is the sequel to Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. Mayfly, I've been hearing so much about. There are so many new horror releases that I just want to get to. So we're going to be doing that in this vlog. But before we do that, I'm so excited. I get to be on my friend Rose's podcast. She asked me to be a part of it and her co-hosts have not read Extreme Horror before. So I'm super excited to see their reactions and introduce them to the genre. We're going to be doing that by reading Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison, which I've heard um, very questionable things about Jordaline, literally one of my favorite creators on booktube, ripped the book in her video because she hated it so much. So I don't know, this is either going to be like the craziest rant review or maybe I'll like it. You know what? Who knows? I'm going to go in with an open mind, but I'm definitely not excited expecting to necessarily love it. So we will see. I'm going to be reading that and vlogging it for you guys because I thought it would be so much fun and then mood reading some other horror. But before we get into the vlog, I do want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Seajoy. So Seajoy has a ton of awesome products that are widely sold at Walmart, on Amazon, all of these different places. But the product that I'm going to be focusing on today and featuring in this vlog is their water flosser. First of all, it's adorable. It comes in a ton of cute colors and it is so, so affordable as well. If you've never heard of a water flosser, it's basically a device that makes flossing a lot easier. I have been on my little dental journey in the past couple years after getting Invisalign. And if you wear Invisalign retainers or you just like are conscientious about taking care of your teeth, you know how important flossing is. And a water flosser just makes it so much easier and more convenient. This one in particular comes with eight different nozzles. So that's eight different settings that you can try out. And it has five different cleaning modes, completely up to you to customize it to what you like the best. It's obviously waterproof since it's a water flosser. It's rechargeable and it's so easy to use, whether it's to, you know, floss, remove food scraps from your teeth or to improve gum health, make sure that you're clearing everything away before you put on a night guard, a retainer, Invisalign, and it brightens your teeth as well because it contributes to overall dental health. So here is the actual device. I cleared it out just so I could like take it around without myself spilling water everywhere. But this is my favorite little tip that I have found that I like the best. Um, after giving them all a try, as you can see, it like moves 360, which is really nice. You don't have to like move the device. You can just move that. And I have been absolutely loving it, using it every single night before I put in my retainer. I'll turn it on really quick just to show you guys. So obviously, I will be showing you uh, how I use it later on tonight before I go to bed. But thank you again to Seajoy for sponsoring this video. And if you want to check out this particular water flosser, I will link it down below. Now let's go ahead and get into the vlog. Hello, guys. I am all cozy in my cave, my cave of a room. I love my cave room. Um, and I'm about to start dead inside so I can film the podcast tomorrow with Rose and her little buddies. I don't know much about this book other than a lot of people give it one star. It will probably trigger me. It's extreme horror. And I, I think it's about a guy who has like a necrophilia deal and he meets a girl who has a cannibalism kind of deal and they have a romance. I don't know. I'm just going to get into it. Hello. I'm at the 25% mark. I'm a quarter of the way through Dead Inside. This main character, ooh, he's literally so cringe. He's horrifying. Um, It's giving 
Cole Sprouse energy to me. It's really just giving like smoking a cigarette inside. I'm way too deep for you. I read Bukowski and Chuck Palahniuk and oh, give me a break. But it's like so over the top that I'm wondering if like, this has got to be satire, right? Like, obviously the author is making fun of the edgelords and the incels who act like this in real life, right? Like, this is making fun of Cole Sprouse type of men, right? Like, I don't know. I'm writing the line right now of like, does the author hate this type of guy? Or is the author this type of guy? But either way, I'm liking it i'm liking it oh god what does this say about me i'm literally gonna cry like why do i like this what's wrong with me i don't know i just feel like the author i don't know the author's giving i understand you <laughs> i don't know uh usually i don't like when i can hear an author's like voice through an extreme horror book but this feels like a kind man i don't know this feels like someone who understands me even though he's writing like really horrific things i feel like he's on my side if that makes sense like i'm so conflicted right now i'm honestly having a little bit of a crisis of conscience because like on its face i should hate this but i don't i feel like i understand the commentary here and maybe i'm reading way too much into it but I feel like these two people having very extreme um, proclivities, we shall say. It's like commentary for like two very different reactions to trauma. And they're just like very exaggerated extreme trauma responses. And they're like trying to make it like it's their edgy personality traits. And like they're so weird and they're not like the other normies. When really it's like, no girly, you're just actually having a trauma response. Like maybe you should address that. Um, and I agree with that. I'm so scared right now. I literally don't know what, I don't know why I like this. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. Okay, it's only 10% later. And I just like, I can't help but update the vlog. I think I'm at like 35% or something like that. Um, okay, so I've, <laughs> I like, I can't, I can't focus. I'm like overstimulated. Okay, I feel like, I just, I, I don't feel like, I know. I just got to the part that like a lot of people take issue with in this book. So basically there's a narrative around one of the characters that we're introduced to that she's a woman and she really is just like adamant. She just asserts with all of her aggression in her little girly body that she enjoys unconsensual interactions. And a lot of people are like, this is horrible. Uh, this is disrespectful to survivors, which of like, like, of course it is, duh. But also, I don't know how you can read this and think that that's what the author is trying to say. Um, I am a survivor myself and I work with mainly survivors of a soul in my practice. And I don't want to be judged for this like I'm kind of debating how much I want to tell the vlog right now but like I relate to this kind of a response from this girl it's like when you are put into a situation that is so out of your control sometimes you uh, my hand is shaking so sorry for the shaky picture but I'm just like I don't know how much I should say about this when you're put into a situation where you don't have a lot of control Sometimes the psychological response afterwards is to like really dig your heels in and try to convince yourself that you did have control in that moment and that you did enjoy what was happening to you. So I feel like if you see it just like on its face, what this character is dealing with, yeah, it could be really disrespectful to survivors, but I am a survivor and I'm here to tell you that it is actually really not affirming to me, but just like validating in some way to see a character that's also dealing with that same trauma response um yeah it's creepy and it's scary and it feels really extreme and really horrible but like that's also what it feels like to be a fucking survivor so like i don't know what to tell you <laughs> people critiquing this like 
I don't know what to tell you because I think we've all, maybe it's not been this extreme, but we've all had the response of like, I just experienced that. And now I'm going to completely try to convince myself that I wanted to experience that, even if I didn't. Even if it's like something as simple as, oh, I just watched a movie or read a book and the ending didn't go how I wanted it to go, but I really wanted to like it. So I'm going to walk away and try to convince myself that I wanted it to be that way. Yeah. So that's my two cents. I don't know how much I'm going to leave in of this clip. I don't know how much sense it's going to make. Please don't drag me in the comments because I'm literally just saying my own personal experience. And I think I have come to the conclusion that I'm enjoying this book. It is so intense. It is so crazy. But I really feel like I get what the author is trying to say. And I really hope that I'm right. And this isn't just like an edgelord shit <laughs> book that I'm really reading into. Please, God, don't let that be the case. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. Y'all, I'm marathoning this book. I'm literally just binging it. Thank God I have like nothing else to do today. It's just like a Saturday because I cannot stop reading this book. I'm like a little past the 50% mark and I really like the writing style. It's like straightforward, it's engaging. I know a lot of people say this book is boring, but it has so much to say. Like there's so much commentary packed into here. I feel like the people who think that it's boring, like you're not using your brain. Like the author is giving you so much to work with. If you think it's boring, I don't know, babes. Like that's on you because there's so much to take from this. And how can you be bored with the intense shit that's happening. The level of extreme horror in this book is crazy. It is, the gore is wild. The descriptions are wild. Like what is happening? Like I can barely believe. I would hesitate to recommend this book because I think if you just read it, um, you're not gonna enjoy it. I don't want to widely recommend this type of content on my channel, but also if you're hearing what I'm saying and it sounds like maybe you would like it or resonate with you the way that it's resonating with me, obviously. Do your own research and make your own decision about it. I'm not going to widely recommend it, but that's kind of where I am at the halfway point. We will see. Oh my god. It's like 20 pages later. Like, I've barely even read anymore. It's literally been like 20 pages. But I have to update again. Because <laughs> it keeps doing this thing where it like almost goes too far it almost gives me the ick that extreme horror ick that i always talk about it almost gave it to me and then it's like self-aware it like cuts itself off and it's self-aware and i'm like what's going on it's like it gets to that point where i almost get angry and want to rant about it like i fucking ranted about like son of the slob and all these shitty horror books that are just like men getting off on Anyway, it almost gets me to that point, and then the author will put something in there that I'm like, I lied. I don't know. It, it like makes me pause, see that the author is self-aware, and look for the meaning in it. And I feel like this book is just dragging Edge Lords and like the other the other extreme horror readers. Like Mm, I'm so different. No. What I mean is like, obviously I am not the typical reader of extreme horror. I'm a little girly. <laughs> like, you look at the extreme horror community, it's not a lot of people like me. And I feel like the people that usually read extreme horror, I tend to not mesh with. I tend to get annoyed with and frustrated with and icked out by a lot of the time. And this book is dragging those kind of people. And it feels affirming to me. I said it. I don't care. Hate on me. I love this book. Okay, I'm gonna finish it now. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I want to do a spoiler vlog on this so bad. It's crazy. She's gonna eat it. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm at the part where she's definitely gonna eat it. Like, she's, she's gonna eat it. Oh! And he... I can't believe he just did that. Like, that was so out of character. But, like, is it? Is this a character arc? Like, is this his development? Is this his, his character development era? Like, is this his arc? Is, like, he's accessing humanity? Y'all, I cannot wait to talk about this tomorrow. Oh, oh my god. 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 I love this book. Hey, guys. It's much later. I finished 
dead inside and I took a moment just to let it sink in because that ending Uh, I kind of want to throw up. I want to throw up a little bit. There's a little bit of me that wants to throw up over the ending. Humor often does not hit for me in extreme horror. Something about this book, like I feel like this is how other people read when they read extreme horror and I like really want to like it so bad. So I keep trying over and over and over to engage with it and to read these extreme horror books that people like because I want to be in the club even though I hate it. Like I want to be in the club. Like sometimes I hate it so much when I try to read the books that everyone reads about, like the extreme horror books that everybody reads about. And I read it and I give it one star or I give it 0.25 stars because I hate it that much. And I just think it's so irresponsible and so gross. But I feel like why people read that, how they feel when they read that is how I'm feeling when I'm reading this. Like no extreme horror book has ever hit for me like this one. It's giving me all the gore and all the craziness, but also all the meaning. Like, I don't know. Like I just took a lot away from my reading experience with this book which is always the number one thing that I'm looking for when I read extreme horror. So, am I gonna post it? No, I don't think I should. I feel like people will really just tear me apart if I give this book five stars. I'm gonna land on a four star. I took a lot away from it. I love the character development. The gore was insane. It was crazy. Oh my God. It was, it was crossing so many lines, but then it like stopped itself and it was like, I know I'm crossing the line. Let me tell you why I've crossed it. I don't know. I just felt that this book was so cleverly written, so smart. I'm going to be thinking about it for a long time. This was the perfect book to read for the podcast. Like, I cannot wait to discuss it tomorrow. There was irony at the end, like the humor. I don't know yet. I'm, I don't know. I'm sitting at a four star. We'll see you tomorrow after the podcast. We will see I could be convinced to raise my rating. Like I really could. I feel like the people on the podcast are like, I hated this. It's horrible. You're a horrible person if you read this. Unfortunately, I will be swayed to say it a four star. If they liked it too, I feel like I'll feel validated. Why can't I form my own opinions? I can, I'm just a people pleaser, okay? Most of the time I try to fight past it, but like with extreme horror, it's so hard. I feel like the community just like loves to get mad at people and I don't want people to get freaking mad at me anymore. Just stop being mad at me. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll just see how I feel tomorrow after the podcast. So yeah, I guess um, y'all will get like probably an update after the podcast, but my next book, we need to choose my next book. I will probably not get to it until tomorrow because I want to hang out with Cameron tonight and uh, I feel like I haven't seen that man in years and he's my literal fiance. So probably will not read until sprints tomorrow. I'm going to have sprints over on Patreon, some little cute Sunday sprints, but I think I'm going to start Feed Them Silence on there. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm being a mood reading queen, but I would like to start Feed Them Silence tomorrow. So I will probably see you then. Hello guys. It is much later. I just wanted to show you guys how this works um as i'm getting ready for bed i'm about to put in my retainer and so i'm gonna use my little water flosser beforehand so thank you again c joy for sponsoring here's a little demonstration i'm gonna press this button once the thing is in my mouth i have learned to do that um it starts spreading out water so you definitely want it in your mouth and i've flossed it is literally that easy all right Good night. I will see you in the morning. Hello vlog. We had our little book club meeting and now we're on to some little sprints that I'm tacking on because I don't want to stop hanging out <laughs> uh, online. So I started Feed Them Silence on sprints and this book is super, super interesting. It's not like a full length book. It's just a novella, a uh, hundred pages exactly. And I'm almost at the halfway point. I'm at page 46, which is chapter three. There's only four chapters and I like that it's like very evenly distributed. Like they're about 25 pages in each 
chapter so it's really just like even chunks perfect for sprints and this is definitely more sci-fi horror than just straight up horror it kind of reminds me of the echo wife by sarah gailey so if you like that novella you will definitely like this one we are following a researcher who is doing this research project about getting into the mind of a wolf. Basically experiencing advanced empathy for animals based on actually experiencing what it's like to be in their body. So there is a neural link that has been surgically implanted in our main character who's doing the research and in this wolf, her research subject, so she can directly experience what the wolf is experiencing. And as she's getting more and more and more invested in this parasocial connection that she has with this wolf who has no idea that she even exists, she is like, rapidly going downhill uh, as a human being. We're also following her marriage and her marriage issues. So her wife is also a researcher and disagrees with the ethics of the entire research project, which obviously I do too, because there's some aspect of like, this isn't necessarily for conservation. I'll just say that there are some like selfish interests for sure for our main character. So there's that. Uh, but also there are other issues in their marriage where our main character's wife is like really concerned for her and their marriage is taking a turn. And instead of like coping with that in a normal way, our main character is just leaning into this connection with the wolf. It is sci-fi, psychological horror. I'm super sucked in. I really want to know what's going to happen next uh, in the second half. So really, really, really enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get back to sprints so I can jump back in. Hello vlog. I'm finally off stream. I was literally streaming for seven hours, which is crazy. And I know you're probably asking like, if you stream for seven hours, you definitely read that book. Girl, I didn't. I'm still at the halfway point because I got to Gavin, okay? I was Gavin with the girls. We were doing some scheming, doing some being gorgeous and evil. Um, so that, <laughs> that was the vibes for my Sunday. And now me and Cameron are headed to a movie. We're going to see the Haunted Mansion movie, which I guess is like a little mystery horror vibe. It's giving like clue energy um, based on the Disney ride Haunted Mansion, which I'm not a real big Disney girl, but I'm down for anything haunted. So I'll let you know how it is. Hello vlog, I am back from the movies and it was so good. Haunted Mansion was so, so cute. Um, but I just went on Rose and Lauren and Carlos's podcast, the Control Your Shelf podcast. And it was so much fun. And we had the best discussion and I actually changed my rating over the course of the discussion to five stars because the more that we talked about the commentary and the meaning behind it, the more that I just realized how much I absolutely loved what the book had to say. I don't know, you just have to go watch it. Like you have to go listen or watch the podcast episode for my full in-depth thoughts and also to hear three other people's opinions. I just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So this is not an update for Feed Them Silence actually, although I am gonna dive back into that now, even though it's one in the morning, I don't care. I'm jazzed, I'm happy. I'm talking about books that I love and it was so much fun on the podcast. So listen to that. I'm going to link it up above, down below, all the places. Please, please go support them because it was so much fun to film. And I just, I don't know. I feel like everyone should listen to that episode. It'll give you a lot more insight about a book that I think is severely misunderstood. And then I did something unhinged just now after we stopped recording. I went to Instagram, found Chandler Morrison, and DM'd him and I sounded like an unhinged freakish fan but I'm just obsessed with him like I was obsessed with him based on the writing alone and then I saw his Instagram and he posts y'all he posts like the unhinged Lana Del Rey memes just like me he posts Barbie memes just like me like he posts like unhinged girly pop memes and he's a Lana stan literally one of his first posts is the CD of lust for life I love him. I knew there was a reason why I wasn't getting icky feelings when I read that book. I knew it. I knew it. And it's because he's one of the girly pops. Like, he's one of my people, you know? 
I love him. I'm obsessed with him. I hope he doesn't think I'm a freak, but I, I love him. Y'all should follow him on Instagram because his Instagram is perfect and hilarious and you should read Dead Inside. Um, and if you don't like it, don't blame me. You know, you got your own triggers. Look it up. Be wise. But, oh god, I loved it. I loved it. And just like talking about it reinvigorated my love for it. Favorite book of the year? Maybe. I just like came to the conclusion over the course of the podcast that like basically the people that I drag all the time in the extreme horror community are the people that Chandler Morrison was dragging with his commentary in Dead Inside. And those people, when they read it, they gave it one star. And you know why? It's because they subconsciously, at least, their little feelings were hurt. That they were called out by Chandler Morrison saying, you're not unique. You're not dark. Just because you read Chuck Palahniuk or Extreme Horror or Aaron Beauregard or Matt Shaw doesn't mean that you're special mm, it's really a hard reality to accept but the edge lords they have to do it they have to do it and i love that chandler morrison is forcing them to do it and i will also always force them to do it y'all know that so i'm gonna dive back into feed them silence now but i'm like literally on an extreme horror high i'm living my life i'm very happy. Hello vlog, it is the next day and I have such a busy work day today. It's actually insane and I stayed up until four in the morning last night so. I did finish Feed Them Silence by Lee Mandelo. I think I'm gonna give it 3.5 out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It was super heavy on like science, clinical information, research study stuff. So it felt like I had to kind of read it slowly and really comprehend that, which took away from a little bit of me like losing myself in the horror of it all. It's just not really my taste. But the overall like messaging was really great. I love the commentary and the like uncomfortable parasocial relationship with an animal thing was so disturbing, so weird definitely right up my alley. I was gonna give it a four star, but then I I was like, no, it was, it was pretty heavy writing. So I'm gonna knock it down to a 3.5, but I still really enjoyed it. And at some point today, I'm gonna get into Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca. Y'all know I love Eric LaRocca. I love all of their work. So I'm excited to get to their first full length novel. I don't know what it's about. I just want to go in blind. I know they're not great reviews, but I'm hoping I'm going to be the unpopular opinion. So we will see. But I have so much to do all day long. I'm like swamped with all different types of work. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And I will see you when I see you. vlog. I am home from work. I've eaten dinner and I'm just chilling here on the couch with the dogs. I got 33% of the way through everything the darkness eats and this book is already so good to me personally. I don't know what the bad reviews were saying. Maybe I'm going to be an unpopular opinion queen. Who knows? I am only a third of the way through so things could change but this is exactly what I like weird plotless horror with commentary about biphobia and religious trauma so basically this was written for me and the writing style as always for Eric Loraka is just exactly what I want a lot of the reviews are saying like it's superfluous with the literary devices but I love that I love really over the top descriptive writing that's super super visual and has like all this creepy imagery so I am loving it. Like I said, it's kind of plotless. Like we're mostly just following these main characters. Um, one of them is an investigator trying to catch this killer. We are also briefly getting the perspective of who I think is the killer. It's like been implied, but that kind of remains to be seen. I don't think it's a spoiler though. And then we're also following this guy who lost his wife and the wife's name was actually Haley. Fun, I do not think that was for me, but I would like to fool myself and think that it is. So loving, loving, loving this book. I will probably get more into it and let you know when I have more thoughts. Hey guys, I know I look a little crazy, like I took off all my makeup because I didn't think I was going to update again, but I 
kept reading and I just have a lot of thoughts. So for me, the commentary is commentarying, like the shame, the religious trauma, the internalized bullshit of it all. Yeah, it's really hitting, but I am seeing the critiques about ableism. Like I can totally see how some of this content comes off as ableist. Is it harming me? No, but I will kind of go into more detail. So like, yes, people who have chronic health conditions and different disabilities do deal with shame. That's a thing that I felt personally. That's a thing that I've talked about with my friends who fall into those categories. And it's a thing that I've seen within my clients as well. So yeah, that's a thing that we deal with shame. Is it wrong? Yeah. Is it sad? Yeah. But is it reality? Also, yeah. Um, I think the thing that people are taking issue with is like parents wishing that their children did not have disabilities, which is that like a twisted, dark and horrible thing? Yes. But is it the reality? Sometimes yes. Like if I had a child with, with a disability, would I love them any less? No. Would I see them in any sort of negative light? No. But if I could wave a magic wand and make their pain go away, would I do that? Probably. And is that a source of shame and something that like people probably have to grapple with? Yes. But like, is that a valid thing that should be talked about? Also, yes. So I'm feeling very conflicted about it. Also, y'all know, like, I'm very open with my health stuff. And to be completely transparent, if I could wave a magic wand, if I had like a genie with three wishes, immediately my first one would be, I don't want to have PCOS. I don't want to have endometriosis. I don't want to have any of the health complications and issues and things that I have. Like maybe it's just the place that I am on my own journey with that kind of shame, but I'm just being completely transparent. I'm not saying that anyone else should feel that way. I'm just saying the way that this book is making me feel and how personally on my journey it's affecting me right now. And the commentary is kind of hitting in that way. So I definitely can see the critiques, but for me, I'm a little bit more, I guess, lukewarm on it because I can identify with some of the sources of shame that are being talked about in this book. I definitely don't think it's saying like, this is a good thing or this should be this one way or the other. I think it's more just like talking about the shame of it all. So um, it's really interesting for me, but I definitely see the the critiques. I don't know. We will see where this is going. It's so plotless. It's a little hard to keep a grasp on, but that's kind of just like Eric Laraca books in general sometimes. So I'm just going to let go, let it wash over me and see what happens. Also, I'm wearing my merch. I only read horror and smut. If you want one of these hoodies and you want to match with me, my merch is always down below. Check it out. Good morning vlog. <laughs> Y'all will never believe what I did. Oh my God, I have, the whole, I have a whole saga from this morning. It's not a saga, it's not that dramatic, but like, let me tell you what just happened. So I was supposed to go get blood work done and I always schedule any like appointment, doctor, dentist, blood work, whatever it is for 8 a.m. because I know that that's not gonna conflict with any of my clients. Like nobody wants to have therapy at 8 a.m. So I just don't even have to look at my schedule. I'm like, boom, 8 a.m., get it done. So I woke up at seven to my alarm and I got on my phone like I usually do to like rot in my bed for 10 minutes on my phone before I actually get up and do my day and I fell asleep on my phone so I missed my blood work appointment and then I literally slept until noon because I didn't have anything else to wake me up and my body is so exhausted all the time that I literally just slept till noon so it's one o'clock right now. I've been rushing, trying to get all of the work that I was supposed to do this morning done. But obviously that's not gonna happen. So I've been like so flustered all day cause I did not mean to sleep until noon. I thought I was gonna have an extra four hours open in my day, but now I have to reschedule the blood work and it's just, it's a whole thing. So I am not having the best morning, but last night I did finish everything The Darkness Eats and I do want to tell you about it. Things got weird as Eric LaRocca books do 
and I felt like I was barely hanging on to the commentary and to the meaning. Like it was almost about to go over my head. I tried to grasp onto it and stay with it, but it felt like work to try to do that. Like that's the best way that I can describe it is it wasn't like effortless washing over me like previous releases. I loved the meaning that I did get from it. I loved the characters. I loved the plot. It was so dark and intense. I would definitely call this extreme horror. Um, so just beware of that and look up trigger warnings because there are super, super intense scenes. It was everything that I loved in that way. Like characters, weirdness, intense plot. Uh, the writing style, like I said, was perfect, wonderful, beautiful, not for everybody, but definitely for me. The only thing that I didn't like was that it felt a little too fever dreamy to me. Like I felt like it wasn't in a lane of like, this is real world or this is fantastical. It was kind of somewhere in the middle and it was hard to put a name on it. Um, so it just kind of put me in a confusing space reading it and same thing with the commentary It was like almost out of my grasp that it felt like work. So I'm not gonna give it a five star I was I went to bed thinking I would give it a four star But now that I'm talking about it, I don't know like how much weight to assign the like struggle the work that it took to read it um, and not everything has to be an easy read I feel like the two most recent books that I've read, Feed Them Silence and this, it took a lot of attention, a lot of work. So I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily knock it too much for that. I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it at a four right now. That might change by the time y'all see my wrap up as I like stew on it, but just immediate thoughts. I am gonna give it a four because I love the commentary and the writing. Those two things like really stand out to me and I think each of those are worth two stars. So there we go four stars. I feel like I kind of am the unpopular opinion here. A lot of people just didn't like this book, so I'm glad that I got some kind of enjoyment out of it um, more than the rest of the world. And my next book that I'm going to pick up for the vlog is Maeve Fly by CJ Lead. I have a signed edition, which I'm so happy about. Uh, I hope I like this book and I don't have a signed copy of a one star book. That would be kind of a tragedy, but I've heard mixed things, okay? Most people that I've talked to give this five Five stars and say like Haley you're gonna love it you're gonna be obsessed but I do have a couple people that I really trust their opinions that have given it one star so I don't know I guess we'll see again where I land with this it's following a girl who goes into bars and just looks like ooh, mysterious cool girl with her book in the bar like how I'm trying to be basically at all times and she lures men in with this like cool girl persona and then she murders them. We love a little good for her female serial killer moment. I've heard that this is pretty extreme as well. So I'm gonna get into it and let you know what I think. Hello vlog, uh, it hasn't been long. I've been getting some work done, but I had a little 10 minute break uh, between sessions. So I was like, well, I'll just sit down and read a little bit of Mayfly. I forgot a crucial element of this story and I'm loving it, by the way. The writing style, everything to me. The misandry, everything to me. Our main character's POV, everything to me. But the main part of the story that I forgot to tell you is she plays an unnamed ice princess at Disneyland, basically. The unnamed park, which is literally Disneyland. And so she's literally playing Elsa, but she's a murderer. That is kind of iconic to me. I don't know. I'm just absolutely living for it. So I feel like I'm going to fall in the love it camp, but I'm also like 10 pages in. I'm on chapter three. So we will really just have to see, but initially obsessed. Also the color of this book with the black spine, like I'm already obsessed. I'm already obsessed. <laughs> I just received literally the most exciting package. I am so excited to show you guys. Oh my God, let me show you, let me show you. I got a camera. Oh my God, hello. I got a camera. This is the one that I got. I am so scared. I haven't made like a massive purchase like this. Literally, I don't think ever. <laughs> um, other than like stuff that I've had to book for the wedding. This was so crazy. Thank you so much to all my patrons. Like this would not be possible without them that I was able to afford to get a camera to shoot my videos on. 
I'm so excited to give high quality content. So probably won't be in this vlog because I want to like take some time to learn how to use it and make sure that nothing like gets screwed up um, when I'm using it for the first time. But I'm so excited to unbox it. I also got in here massive, massive, massive lights to film with. So quality is going to pop off and my camera also has like a little plug-in for a mic so i got a really really good mic that i've already been using ah, i'm a professional like i literally feel like a professional i'm so excited to give like really really good quality content to you guys because like we just be filming on a phone right now and uh i'm ready to retire the phone <laughs> get my storage space back on my phone and give like really good quality videos I'll probably try to film a video later because I'm just so excited. Also, as I was unboxing my camera, look what I just realized. Y'all remember that aesthetic candle clip that you got yesterday? What the fuck is this? I literally lit that candle and it freaking, I don't know even how this happened. It literally ruined my thing. What the F? Like, why did this happen? She did not stay in her receptacle. Like, <gasps> no, this tomato candle did me fucking dirty. Um, If you remember the tomato candle saga, I should have just bit the bullet. I should have just got the expensive one, but then I probably could not have afforded her. So you win some, you lose some. Hello vlog, I am updating you on my new camera because I totally figured it out last night. I know I said earlier like, oh, you might not see the camera for a while. I am a queen and I figured it out. So I've already filmed an entire video with it. I'm so, so happy with the quality of everything. I'm still like a little iffy on the mic. I'm not using the mic right now. So hopefully the audio is okay. But yeah, I'm very excited about this. Hopefully I'm in focus. Am I in focus? Hopefully I am. I have a little update about Mayfly, which I really got into last night. I got a significant chunk about 50 pages and I'm still really really liking it. Our protagonist is at times giving <sighs> I don't want to call it pick me but it's kind of pick me. I'm um, just not like other girls. I'm not like the other sheep in the city. I'm not like the other midwestern girls um which is a little cringe but Overall, it's just kind of like a sideline annoyance for me. Another like small little annoyance that's kind of taking me out of the book is I do like the writing style, but sometimes sentences are just kind of written in a confusing way where I have to like go back and reread them. It doesn't have the best fluency. I feel like there could definitely be things reworded. But again, those are just really, really nitpicky, small annoyances. For the most part, I am loving it. Also, I was totally wrong when I said like she preys on only men. She's actually just preying on horrible people in general, which I, I kind of like. You know, it's kind of refreshing to not see like this female serial killer that's not just like giving misandry the entire time. Like she has some nuance to her. She's an equal opportunity life ruiner. <laughs> <laughs> I like the aesthetic of the book. So that's how it's going. And I did actually wake up early enough to go do my blood work this morning. So that is where I'm off to. Hopefully I get some reading done in the waiting room because my doctor is literally infamous for having me wait there for forever. Hopefully it's not too long, but that's where I'm off to. I will let you know when I have a moment what I'm thinking. Hello vlog, it is much later, it's eight o'clock. I'm finally done with work. Oh my gosh, it was such a long work day. And I had to do those little annoying errands in between sessions where it's like, I'm going to UPS, I'm going to the bank, like the things that should not take 30 minutes, but you walk in and there's like a mom with eight kids and somehow it takes 30 minutes. Nothing wrong with the mom with eight kids, that's totally fine, but it's not fun, you know what I mean? So, I'm finally home and I am halfway through Maeve Fly and I'm actually liking it 
um, more now than I did when I was 50 pages in. I feel like I just didn't know the character well enough. I'm still having some of the issues with the writing style where it just doesn't have the best fluency. But overall, the plot and the character development, I'm enjoying. I'm feeling less of that annoyance once I just like started to accept my character where she was. There are some things that I'm like, that's a little odd, like hockey smut. <laughs> Like, why is this randomly turning into a hockey romance? Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting element. I think it's really funny. Uh, I think there are a lot of really funny elements in here and paired with like the darkness and the realness. I'm just really loving it. I've been um, actually taking photos of a lot of paragraphs in here and sharing them on my Instagram story. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should go follow me. I post book quotes all the time for what I'm actively reading. Um, so that's always a good sign when I'm posting quotes. Um, I'm liking it. I'm excited to get more into it tonight, but I'm kind of inspired and I want to film a video. So I'm going to pause my reading and film a little something and uh, I'll see ya when I have book thoughts. Good morning vlog. It is the next day and I only have about 40 pages left in Mayfly. I had to stop reading last night because I just got way too tired and I obviously have early sessions this morning so I couldn't stay up all hours of the night finishing this book. Um, it got weird. <laughs> it's been getting increasingly weirder and weirder throughout the book. I feel like I'm losing a little bit of the meaning. This book has been such a roller coaster. Like at first I thought I liked it and then I was like, eh, and then I was like, okay, I'm back to liking it. And now I'm like, eh, like I'm just very back and forth on it, but it's not like I'm meh about it. Like I feel like this is one you're either gonna really, really like or really, really not like. And for me, I'm going through both of those at the same time. So I definitely would not call this middle of the road or meh, but I just can't decide how I feel on it. Like it's definitely a book. Like it's definitely having an impact, but like, what is it? Not quite sure on. So hopefully I'll get some time throughout the day today to finish this book up and I'll be able to give you guys my final thoughts. Hello vlog, I am back from work and I have gotten to finish Maeve Fly by CJ Lead and I'm happy to say that we ended on a really great note actually. I know I was going back and forth, I felt so chaotic in my last update, but I feel like I got it. Like I got it. I was going on the journey with our main character and it was so hard to like separate my feelings about her from my feelings about the book. But at the end, like it just all came together and I realized why I was feeling what I was feeling. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I had predicted one thing that did end up happening. So normally I would be like, uh, I predicted the twist of it all, but I'm not even mad about it because I feel like it worked out that way for a reason. Like it should have always worked out that way. So I'm glad that what I wanted to happen ended up happening. And overall, it was just like a really great ending to the book. I feel like it was so not abrupt, but just like it leaves you with nothing. It just like leaves you sitting in our main character's flaws and she actually gets called out for her flaws at the end. So her like not like other girlness that was annoying me was also annoying the people in her life and they called her out for it, which I don't know. I feel like this just worked out exactly how I'd want it to. And then thinking back on it, I, I'm liking the things that I didn't like, except for those little things about the writing style. Those um, still do annoy me. But everything else, I'm like, wow, this character was so dynamic. And I really actually enjoy the story the more that I think about it. I think if I had a book discussion for this, it would be awesome. This would be a great book club book. But yeah, I'm actually pretty sold on it. I don't know if I'm going to give it a five star because of the writing style little nitpicky things. So I'm probably going to land on a 4.5 for now. Overall though, this was a pretty successful vlog. I would recommend all these books individually uh, based on your own 
preferences so kind of keep that in mind but yeah this was such a success i really liked everything that i read so thank you guys for watching this little horror vlog i hope you enjoyed it and got some good recommendations if you like this video go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already don't forget to check out see joy down below and don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week i will see you guys in my next one bye